G.I. Joe has post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Knowing is half the battle. Barbie and Ken believe all the Green Army men are fighting for freedom and democracy. G.I. Joe killed a 10-year-old Muslim boy so that Barbie could feel safe and secure driving around Malibu in her pink convertible. P-I-M-P. In. Joe didn't want to be a killer. He just wanted money for college. So he became a fully posable action figure for the military. Body armor sold separately. Of course, he didn't read the fine print when they bought him. You see, the Care Bears tried to warn all the Cabbage Patch kids about the Transformers and their true intentions, but they didn't listen. Half those kids didn't come home. The other half came back with arms and legs blown off. Joe searched the rubble and debris for hours looking for their missing parts, and those images of death are now stuck in his head. Flashbacks haunt him day and night, knowing might be half the battle, but not being able to forget that's the war. <laughs> good God, y'all, what is it good for? Absolute petroleum. You see, because they thought that if we're controlling them oil fields and rolling them profits back with royal deals, no bid, just give real big contracts. Then Barbie and Ken can feel free to spend, spend, spend on Hot Wheels and loop tracks, loop tracks, loop tracks. Gusta gasolina. <laughs> Meanwhile, shell shock G.I. Joe was driving around gun cock spreading to mockery. Just waiting for the bombs over Baghdad to rock his jeep just like they rocked half his platoon on this block last week with the boom, 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 and he watched them bleed. Couldn't move real soon because the fear locked up his feet, hands, body, and mind stopped, paralyzed in his seat. Now he knows war is costly because their mom's got the receipt. A folded flag in the grief of a child deceased. And innocent Iraqis got American cops on their streets. A bunch of fearful G.I. Joes who might just pop off their heat. A bunch of 20 year olds in the language they don't speak. Joe wants to go home, but boss says job's not complete. Our occupying force is not seen as relief. In fact, deep hatred is felt towards our commander in chief. Be it George W. or Obama, there's still mad beef from the streets of D.C. all the way to the Middle East. It's hard to find peace, but that ain't the only war, y'all. There's a war on us. And it goes back much further than Clinton and Bush, and it's bigger than the government, so open up your mind. Knowing is much more than half the battle. If you want to be a real American hero, then you must first come to know yourself. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our own minds. Corporate media's got your mind in chains, misdirecting your attention daily. Popular culture is making claims to own you, your children, and all of your family. They've already sold a culture back to a neatly wrapped black packages, stealing your power to define for yourself what real hip-hop and rap is. Commodification and exploitation of our minds and bodies is madness. Schools reproduce inequality by the way that they track us, boxing in our reality, and they are the latches. Gatekeepers telling us we gotta know what their fax is. They won't let us through unless we pay the poll taxes to pay for the wars on what they call an evil axis. Payment goes to their buddies who build bombs by the batches. The poor will fight and die because the rich are straight backless. Politicians make more decisions but never end up in patches. And if you want a definition, that's exactly what whack is. I say we light up this system, y'all, and I got the matches. My Umi says, shine your light on the world. Shine your light for the world to see. You better look within. But that's where revolution begins. Start the change with yourself and then move to your friends. I'm not toying around or playing pretend. Because the war on us is never going to end if we keep on acting like Barbie and Ken.